Welcome back to Montana this morning. The time is 645 on this Wednesday morning, 68 degrees outside right now. Probably the best time of day to get out and get active. I can see these people here on the rims out for a walk this morning. Looks like there's a little breeze too. Very nice. All right, let's go ahead and get to news. Our top story this morning, no fans allowed. Local health leaders are barring spectators from high school sporting events in Yellowstone County in an attempt to reduce the spread of COVID-19. The announcement drew the ire of most student athlete parents. County Health Officer John Felton did leave the door open for a potential return of fans if case numbers become manageable. Athletes will be screened for COVID-19 before every game and practice, and masks will be required on the bench. If a player shows any symptoms, they'll have to quarantine for 10 days. Cheerleaders and pep band members will be allowed to perform at games. And finally, seating will be assigned on buses, and participants must sit in the same spot all season. Felton said these decisions were made with help from local athletic directors and were not taken lightly. Managing and balancing these risks often means that something has to go to support the con continuation of an activity. For athletics and activities, right now it is fans and spectators that must give way to allow our students to perform and enjoy their chosen activity, their passions that are such a critical part of school life in a more safe fashion. Now these rules only apply to Yellowstone County, so when teams travel to a different county for games, they must follow the health board standards set by the officials there. In campaign news, the results are in for Wyoming's primary election. Republican Cynthia Lummis will continue her Senate bid, taking home 60% of the state's votes. She'll face Democrat candidate Marav Ben David, who secured 44% of the votes. The winner of this race will replace the retiring Senator Mike Enzi. In the U.S. House, incumbent Liz Cheney wins easily. Democrat Lynette Grable will be her challenger. And on the national stage, Joe Biden is now officially the Democrat Party's nomination for President of the United States. It became official last night after delegates from each state cast their votes. Tonight at the Democratic National Convention, Biden's choice for VP Kamala Harris will speak. Biden will close the convention Thursday night with his official acceptance speech. As the DNC rolls on in Milwaukee, the Trump administration won't miss the chance to reach Wisconsin voters as well. Today, Vice President Mike Pence is traveling to the state where he'll speak about the president's efforts to get Americans back to the workforce. This is the second trip to Wisconsin for the White House this week. President Trump held a campaign event there on Monday. The Postmaster General is reversing course, now saying he will pause the changes put in place to cut costs at the U.S. Postal Service. However, some Democrats say his announcement doesn't go far enough. CBS's Naomi Ruckman explains the latest push to keep USPS on track in time for Election Day. The political saga over America's mail takes another turn. Postmaster General and Republican donor Louis DeJoy is now suspending widely criticized moves to save money at the U.S. Postal Service. In a statement, he said, to avoid even the appearance of any impact on election mail, the post office will keep hours the same, not remove additional mail processing equipment or blue collection boxes, and mail processing facilities will remain open. But that decision isn't easing doubts from Democrats. I don't frankly trust the Postmaster General in what he said. And if he is sincere about it, it means the bully has backed off. States are preparing for a rush of mail-in ballots this November because of the pandemic. But the president has often questioned the Postal Service's ability to handle the influx. It'll end up being a rigged election or they will never come out with an outcome. They'll have to do it again. At post offices around the country, local mail carriers have already seen a slowdown in service. It's almost criminal because this is something that I've never seen in my 31 years of working for the post office. Mail sorting machines and blue collection boxes have already been removed. What we've never experienced is as they're removing those machines, management is making conscious decisions to delay mail that they could process. This weekend, the House is set to vote on a measure to give the U.S. Postal Service $25 billion in new funding. President Trump has said he supports a $10 billion boost. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. 
The Postmaster General is set to testify before a Senate committee later this week. He has not said whether any postal service equipment that has already been removed will be replaced. Now on to Firewatch. We're keeping an eye on a 25,000 acre fire burning on the border of Montana and Wyoming. Officials say the Wattle Creek fire started in Bighorn County, Montana. Winds pushed flames down to northeastern Sheridan County. Ground crews are working to put out the fire with support through the air. Officials say they aren't sure what sparked the flames, but no structures are threatened at this time. In California, the governor declared a statewide emergency as 30 large wildfires scorched the state. California's power grid operator has pleaded with residents and businesses to continue conserving energy to avoid rolling blackouts. A fire in Napa County, northeast of San Francisco, was approaching some wineries. Footage from there shows at least two houses burned. Burning. Evacuation orders were in place all over the northern part of the state. Well, another U.S. college is shutting down in-person classes due to a COVID-19 outbreak on campus. Notre Dame is shifting to online instruction for at least two weeks after 147 people tested positive. On Monday, the University of North Carolina made a similar decision following an outbreak there. Notre Dame officials say most cases have been tied to large off-campus parties. The university's president warned if they find out about the parties, students involved will be disciplined. In-person classes are back at MSU and Bozeman, and that's good news for businesses in the city's downtown. Business owners there say they always get a boost from students returning after the summer, but after the COVID shutdowns, they're even more appreciative. Tourism hasn't been as kind to the city as most years, meaning they have to rely on more local support more than ever. For context on the lack of tourism in the area, Yellowstone National Park's gate numbers are down nearly 30% this year. Well, parents may be looking for fun and educational activities for their young children if they aren't going to daycare or preschool right now. CBS's Danny Backus shows us how some are making sure that's as easy as opening up a box. The frustration of juggling work and child care is all too familiar for parents, especially ones with preschool age children. Hi everyone, we want to welcome you to preschool. It's the reason why Katie Tidwell and Melanie Haynes felt compelled to offer a solution. We felt like we were leaving our families hanging and we have had this idea for a long time of extending school to home. They temporarily closed their child care center when the pandemic hit. To help parents, they created Joey School Preschool Boxes, a monthly box full of everything a parent needs from ribbon wands to flashcards to do lessons and hands-on educational activities with their children. It covers everything from phonics to music and art, math, has sensory activities, fine motor skills in there. It's everything that we would cover in our preschool curriculum. According to the National Association for the Education of Young Children, 18% of the more than 5,000 child care centers surveyed remain closed. If they are open, on average, enrollment is down by 67%. Can you find the color yellow? That means parents like Amber Walunis are left trying to figure out learning on their own. I just like burnt out. Yeah. Like I can't teach a first grader and teach a preschooler and try to entertain the two year old. For her, the Joey School Box takes out the guesswork. I mean, you honestly just have to read the instructions, I mean, and it tells you day by day, activity by activity, what's coming up. And you just literally have to read that and find that activity. There are other monthly subscription boxes available. Sensory Therapy is designed for children on the autism spectrum or with sensory processing needs. And Wonder Kits are for science and math activities. The Joey School Box subscription costs $99 a month, and Amber says it's well worth it. Donya Back is CBS News, Los Angeles. The Joey School also offers a weekly virtual interactive experience for kids. Ed, weather starts with wet, wet, wet. So give us the weather. Okay, well, wet, wet. <laughs> Maybe in a few places by later in the day. Let's take a look and see what's going on this morning. 68 right now, a little bit of a southwest breeze to go into the mix as well. Now showers and thunderstorms are moving into western Montana and this push of clouds will move across our area by later in the day. Much of uh, eastern Montana, especially Mile City to the north, not as much. So your temperatures are going to soar. We're starting off with these 50s, 60s, 72 in Williston right now, the warmest of the major reporting stations and 53 in Butte on the cool end of things. So we'll be watching this cloud cover 
funneling up here with that moisture stream. We've been talking about it the last few days. The drier air still in place close to the surface, but the mid and upper atmosphere starts to see more moisture turning into those clouds for later in the afternoon with the possibility of some of these storms creating some gusty winds once they start to develop. So the air dries out as it makes it closer to the surface and just after a while it's just wind and all of the moisture has evaporated. Heat advisory into effect for northeastern Montana today and we do have some fire weather concerns from Great Falls down towards Bozeman. Tomorrow it's kind of the same situation. There's another little ripple moving in creating a few showers and thunderstorms. Again wind is going to be the biggest possibility but the cloud covers moved in. The ridge is starting to break down. Temperatures settle back a little bit more. By the time we get into Friday, forget about it. We're right back into the hot and dry conditions, especially hot on Saturday. This next trough will start to move in. Most of this is going to stay north of us, but it will really pump up the temperatures on Saturday afternoon. Wildfire smoke, the green shaded region, so at least a little bit is starting to come into the mix across this entire region, across the western portion of the country. This is mainly from wildfires over into California. It won't have a significant influence on us as far as uh, uh, air quality issues go, but it may trim a degree or two off the daytime highs. Temperatures into the 80s to 90s through central and western Montana. This is where we have the fire weather concerns. Great Falls down towards Bozeman. The storm system moving across, so anything in the green shaded areas, at least a marginal chance of a strong to severe storm. You'll notice that these start to move in. Wind is really the big threat out of all of this. If, if somewhere picked up a couple of hundredths of an inch of moisture, that'd be about it. But check out the eastern plains of Montana where the temperatures could be as hot as the the upper 90s to triple digits for this afternoon. So the cloud cover starts to move in from Livingston out towards Billings throughout mid morning and early afternoon. The heat builds over into the eastern plains, so stay hydrated there. Gusty winds that's highlighted in the blue arrows around the potential for thunderstorms by the time we start getting later into the day. The overnight temperatures settle right back down into the 50s and 60s, a chance a few of these isolated storms through the evening hours and then tomorrow looking for daytime highs to be back up into mainly the 90s. We'll see some upper 90s again east of Billings, but the green shaded areas again indicating the potential for some of these showers and thunderstorms to produce some gusty winds. So we'll put in a 20 to 30 percent chance of a shower thunderstorm around the Billings area the next couple of days, drier and hotter temperatures to follow. Let's see what's on CBS this morning. Coming up, former second lady Jill Biden joins us to talk about getting voters motivated to vote for her husband. Plus, we'll look at the growing crisis facing students this fall as part of our special series, School Matters, coming up on CBS This Morning. And if you didn't know it, today is Potato Day. So pull out that good old Mr. Potato Head, Mrs. Potato Head, and uh, have a little fun. You know what else I made on Easter? What's that? Scalloped potatoes. Oh, well, like, there, you're I right over the top. Dangerous. I'm getting adventurous now. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a great day. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. We will see you back here tomorrow.